Hey guys, I am back. Told you guys I'd be back. I'm not going to be on for long, but I realized as I was closing things out that I forgot to show y'all the, uh, the 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 little things that you need to do for outputting your textures because that's kind of an important part of this. So I'm going to save this video as a little addendum to the one for today. And uh, so the method that I use, there's a couple different ways that you can do this, but the method that I like to use is I'll hit Control Shift E or you can go to File, Export Textures. And this top bar allows you to navigate to where you want your textures. So here I have a, a folder for Dark Void ATW, Altering Walker. Uh, weathered yellow that's the base the base texture set then I made a new folder for industrial red so I go inside that and hit select folder so there we've, we've selected our folder here you can pick your image file type that you want to use so I'm just using uh, jpegs 8-bit jpeg and then uh, you'll see here under config I have a thing that I've set up called temp okay a preset there's a number of presets in here if we go over to configuration you'll find where all of these different presets are okay um, so I based mine off of PBR metal rough although sometimes I don't need emissives okay so let's let's go to my my temp right here and if I want to get rid of that emissive I can just hit that X and now it'll only create these maps Okay. But if I want to add the emissive back in, I'll just hit uh, RGB. Let's put my name back in there for that. And then I'll come over here and just drag emissive on here. Okay. And then I'll select from emissive. And now that, that makes this uh, tagged to pick up any emission that uh, is in my in my material so like the lights and things like that it will, it will output those um, as an emissive channel or an emissive map I should say so once that is all done I'll come back over to export and I will just pick a different configuration preset for a moment and then go back to temp the reason I do that is it seems as though a lot of times if you just leave it on whatever you had um, it won't register the changes so you have to switch off to something and come back uh, to make a new configuration by the way you can just right click any of these and hit duplicate and it'll make a duplicate of it then you can right click and rename it change any of these settings in here um, so with this um, with this model this is this model you know I, I, I spoke at some length about UDIM and how it uses the different texture tiles so uh, here we have six different texture tiles I can see that the, that number 1006 is for my control console so here I have uh, changed the naming in this preset so that it's uh, DV for dark void ATW underscore console and then at the end it appends whatever the uh, particular channel type is that way we know what the map is for if we look through you'll see different uh, tags and anytime you see a dollar sign in front of something like here the dollar sign plus mesh is selecting whatever mesh is in the list over here then it um, um, or excuse me it uh, textures dollar sign texture set selects the texture set from over here and then mesh selects the mesh that it that it belongs to um, and all of those things are variables that it picks up from your scene so um, I like to make sure that my naming is kind of hard-coded because um, I'm going to output multiple UDMs this way. So, uh, and I like to do them one at a time. Sometimes I'll make, make little changes from one set to another. So here we have the console. I'll go over to export and switch off, switch back to temp. And so I see that 1006 was the console and then right here I'll just select that one and here we can see all the list of maps that's going to create I'm going to set my padding to 16 pixels with the dilation to transparent that way we get a little bit of overpaint but not so much that it's that it makes it weird to look at and then I hit export now I've already exported the maps for this so let's just um, 
Actually, you know what, let's go ahead and do this one real quick. And then I can just get there through the thing that it pops up. So let's export. And we'll give that just a moment. Then uh, when those, those maps are exported, it will have a little window that pops up and uh, tells me that it's done and also uh, gives me the option to go straight to the folder where those maps are saved so I can kind of review what it what it spit out and make sure that it is exactly what I need to see so as soon as that is done we will take a look at those and I'll show you all the maps that were generated from the textures that you watched uh, be created today so here we have all of our maps from today's session let's just preview these okay so here was our cockpit and then there's the uh, height map for the cockpit okay and also when I was on earlier I didn't really go into depth about uh, well actually I think I did I, I, I mentioned the the leather in the cockpit um, I, I just I, if I recall I didn't swing around where you could see that that was also on the seat so and then here we have the console and metallic is kind of guiding you know, the metallicity and all that kind of stuff. Uh, normal map, console roughness. There's our engine. Okay. Hatch. Right. And there's our base color for the hull. So there you can see all the maps that we had created from our session today. And let's just go on over to, uh, to DS. And let's go ahead and replace all these yellow guys with, uh, with this stuff. So let's come in here. And uh, how about we do a duplicate of our mech. We'll just move that guy off to the side. This will be kind of cool looking too. So let's grab that. We'll just turn him this way. I've really enjoyed this mech. I feel kind of silly by how, mu how much fun I've had with it, but it's it's been really neat. So let's uh, let's grab number two right here, and let's go to our cockpit hull. And then, <laughs> let's bring in some iRay. We'll change this stuff as iRay is, uh, is in place. Let's see. And in the chat, I see. It's funny. As soon as I kick the iRay, it kills the stream for a second. Do you guys notice that? The stream stalls when iRay kicks in. That's funny stuff. Um, I, see, I notice over in the chat while I'm waiting for this that, um, let's see, who had a question? Uh, Reggie Hicks has a, said, uh, I have a question on textures. Um, he says, I suck at them mainly because of the seams. Nick responds, what are you using? Um, yeah, Reggie, as far as painting over seams, there's... Sometimes I would use, I would say Substance Painter is the answer, although if you're, if you're painting, say, on G3 um, or a lot of figures that use UDEM, there's going to be some issues using UDEM across, um, you know, on, on a figure, in, or going to be some issues using Substance Painter on things that use UDEM when you want to paint across those tiles. For instance, on G3, if you go from the arms onto the torso, those are two different tiles different UDEM sections so when you paint across that um, substance painter does not have the capability to paint across that uh, seamlessly yet it has to kind of switch which mesh section it's loading I use ZBrush uh, for anything like that um, now sometimes I will paint some basic stuff in ZBrush on a G3 and then I'll move G3 into substance and I'll move my basic maps there and then I'll add effects and stuff on top of it that do ignore UVs and then bake all that out and you can get some really cool stuff going on that way so there's there's some some different ways to kind of blend all that together and and make it work so um, hopefully that answers answer your question to some degree so let's take the 
That's uh, the second mech in our shot here. And we will go to the cockpit hull. And um, let's browse. Come up. Let's go to industrial red. And here's our hull. And I'm going to go ahead to and close um, the save and close substance painter. Okay, so there we see just the color change right there. Let's go ahead and grab all our other maps. And browse. We want to go into industrial red. And we want the hull metallicity. And you'll see that I have metallicity uh, pardon me, turned all the way up to 1 because it's being driven by a map. So that way the map has the fullest amount of control. So uh, then under diffuse roughness, let's come up here and go to my roughness. Let's see. Hull color, hull roughness. There we go. And I'm going to repeat that roughness in a few different spots. Okay, here under glossy layered weight, I'm going to uh, apply that roughness. And again, right here. should be left is going to be the bump and then the normal. So I'm going to use the height map. Okay. And then we're going to use our normal map and that should really set this guy off. And there you have the hull to our red, the industrial red setup, as I called it. I still think it looks cool with the red and the yellow legs. It actually kind of, I don't know, something kind of neat about that. So then. That takes care of the cockpit hull. All right. And while I'm working on something like this, um, I really don't need that second mech in the shot. So let's hide that. And that'll make this a little faster to interact with. Okay. And then I might even go through and hide some parts of this just so I can see different things kind of show up a little better. So here, let's see, let's come back to our hull. And I do believe, yeah, that's all one material on this guy. So that's that's pretty handy. So then Let's go in and look next at our um, at our console. Okay, so let's just zoom in on that. Swing around here. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to decide what I'm even looking at here. Sometimes it just gets a little wacky to look at things. Oh, there's the sticks. Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking at. So we've got the sticks there. That's cockpit interior. I don't want to worry about that just yet. I want the console. Okay. 
So here's our console. And let's go back to the top. And metallicity. So we'll just navigate. This is all really repetitious. A lot of a lot of navigation. A lot of go pick your files and load them in. Um, let's see. Console height color metallic. There we go. Console metallic. And console color. Right. And then our console roughness. And again, I'm going to repeat that roughness in a couple different spots. should be down to bump and normal. So I'll use my height map in the bump and then under normal let's come in here and console normal map and I also should have some emission going on Okay, and so let's uh, let's go grab my missive. I should have that. If I don't, then I need to go find it. I need to to figure out what happened with that. So industrial red. Let's see, engine console metallic console color. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't save out my emission channel for that. Oh, I might have to go, might have to uh, to play with that a little bit then. So let's let's just cancel out of that. I'll I'll come back and redress that later. In the meantime, in the meantime, let's go ahead and finish out. Let's let's grab our cockpit. And let's grab everything. I right click there and hit select everything that has cockpit interior in it. Okay. That works. So now let's go. It does move kind of slow sometimes. Cockpit interior. Let's go grab our metallicity. Okay. Then we want our cockpit base color. Oh, I forgot to navigate out. Let's go up. Roughness. And again, roughness. One more time with the roughness. Then we should be at height and bump, or height and normal. Height, and then normal. Okay, and 
let's turn our hull back on. And let's turn our engine back on. Okay. And sometimes I'll take the material selection tool and just click on stuff just to kind of make it a little faster to get where I need to go. So, let's see here. Okay, so now with the engine, we have also the rear lights. So I want to make sure I select all of those as well. That way we can change all of the maps at the same time. So emission color, let's go browse. And then we'll go to industrial red. And where is our engine? Engine base color. Alright, let's grab that. Actually, probably don't even want that in the emission colors, honestly, because uh, I think I'm just driving that with straight color. So, anyway, that's great fun. Now, we'll fix that momentarily. <laughs> uh, it's getting late, guys. It's getting late. Um, let's go grab our metallicity. 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 And then we're going to grab our color. Gonna grab the color map. Base color. Do -do 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 -do. Base color. And it's red. No? Why is it not red? Why are you not red? Ding dang darn it. Am I on the wrong engine? I bet I'm on the wrong engine. That's what I get for having two of these guys in there. Interesting. Ports. Uh, uh, uh. Let's just copy that material and apply him right here. And then apply right here. But then we're going to turn. Oh lord, our engine is just glowing. It's completely glowing. That's not cool. Yeah. It's so bright. There we go. Yay, now it's red. Woot. Alright. So now we got that guy. We got the the red stuff in there. That's cool. Now let's go grab the legs. I'm gonna show you guys a little workflow trick. It's silly, but it really kind of speeds things up when you have to navigate over and over through, you know, other folders. Is um I'm going to select something where I already have my basic material set up. Like, all my settings are the way I want them. The only thing that changes my maps. So, like, I'm, I'm going to grab that cockpit, or I could grab the engine, either one. You know, like, that, like just that engine. We copy that, and then I'm going to go to the legs here. And let's just select everything there using those leg maps. Actually, I don't want to select everything using the leg maps. Crap. Um, let's grab... Actually, you know, that's not a bad thing. Let's just grab those legs right there. And then I'm going to paste it. It's going to look like garbage for a minute because it's going to have the wrong maps, but it has the right settings. And so, uh, and the maps that it's calling are in the same folder. So now when I na navigate, I know it's just two, like two or three mouse clicks, but I hate that. So I just, I want to point it so I can just go out here and go where I need to go. And by pasting that, then it's automatically going to go where the maps that were in that setting were at. So I can just do you know, do that so oh no nope. and of course like I said it's getting late getting tired so let's uh, let's come back out here there we go legs metallic so over in the chat I see some folks talking about ZBrush and the cost of it yeah I think ZBrush is like seven ninety five now seven ninety nine something like that um, it's worth every penny and you get free um, um, free upgrades so like I haven't you guys I haven't paid for ZBrush since version two 
because I mean, you get free free upgrades ever since, and, and they do that. They're super awesome like that. So there's that. Let's grab my roughness. Oh, did I get the wrong roughness in there? That doesn't bode well for me. I don't like that. Do not like that at all. I'll have to double check these these materials later. <laughs> so that was the engine. Oh, ooh, yeah, I'm definitely going to fix that. Okay. Oops. Um, Kindle asked, how much was ZBrush version 2? Uh, I think back then it was like 600 it was not cheap, but it was well worth it. So, legs roughness. Brows. Legs roughness again. Then we want our legs height. And our legs normal. And then let's go back to the engine because I saw where I had some stuff kind of screwy there. So, yeah, that's under weathered yellow. So I need to fix that. We need to take care of that. So that's going to be engine engine ports and the rear lights those all use the same stuff That's my height normal Roughness. Nope, that was console roughness. It's a lot of maps here, you know. Okay. Scroll on up to the next one. Here we go. So I'm just going to mouse over each of those and make sure that I have the right maps in there. Okay. Let's look at those legs again. Those legs do not look right to me. Something is incorrect amundo. just catching a weird shadow from somewhere or something. I, don't know, I might have to play with some settings on the legs. Let's just uh, dial some of that back a little bit. Also, sometimes uh, I find that, that having pure white in the base color is kind of odd. Can yield some odd results. Maybe a little brighter than that. There we go. That glossy layered weight. I'm going to turn that down on the legs. Or maybe not. Who knows? Let's play around. 
Sometimes that's sometimes you just have to do that. I don't want any reflectivity on there. I definitely want the roughness increased on some of this. So let's go back here and turn on our hatch and our engine joints. All right. Very cool. Not real happy with the way those the outside of those legs are coming out in here. It doesn't translate over right. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. So that that's rather irritating, actually. Let's just try again. Let's copy the settings from that cockpit hull. Okay. And then I'll come back over to the legs. And let's paste those. We're going to go through and replace those maps again. Yeah, it should be a more robust red like that. So, let's close that. And go through and replace these maps one more time. So legs, legs, no, that's the whole metallic. Man, I keep clicking the wrong maps. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, legs, metallic, there we go. Then legs base color. What is up with this roughness? Oh, I had the whole roughness in there. Interesting. So let's change that to those legs roughness. Hmm. And it's still kind of janky. I'm not real, not real excited by that. That, that bothers me. Hmm. Let's change out the rest of these for that. I might crack open substance here in a second and see what was up with the, the output on my leg maps because something doesn't seem quite right. Like they really shouldn't be that washed out on the outside. You can see there's an interior part there that looks great. So that's kind of odd. Hmm. Tell you guys what, I'm going to open that up. Let's go Substance Painter. Let's minimize Daz for a minute. That way it's not sending draw calls to the video card. Oh, Substance is going to take a minute to open. That's great fun. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting. And I'm just popping things around on screen because that's what I do. While I'm waiting, I'm going to take a look over at the chat because that's what I do to kill time when I'm waiting for things. So, uh, I see people talking about Carrera. Hmm. Uh, Carrera 8.5. Carrera had so much to offer. It was an interesting program. Uh, the, like It really could have been a good thing. I, I don't know. I think Daz has almost abandoned it, though. I'm not sure what's up with that. Um... There's a lot of things like that that I think are kind of curious. So let's open this back up. 
Reggie asks, is Carrera like Bryce? Uh, it has some Bryce-isms to it, but uh, it's uh, Carrera is kind of, it's actually a really full application. Like, you can use it for a lot of different stuff. It's a full modeler. It's got a lot of, there's a lot of cool tools in it. Um, it's not, to me, it's not as robust as, say, Maya or Moto or something like that, but it's, it's really solid. So Carrera, it's funny though because Carrera has its own um, rigging system in it, just like every other 3D program has. So it's it's funny because you know people, uh, I, I just saw the the comment in the chat about you know there's no G3 or G8 support, things like that for Carrera. Well, it's because Carrera is not really meant to be used that way. Carrera's Carrera is kind of a a lower end approach at at Daz having something like a Maya or, you know, a Moto or Max or something like that. Carrera is, is really intended to be a, a production tool like those. Um, whereas, um, yeah, it's, it's not quite the same sort of vehicle that uh, that Daz Studio is. So, you know, that's that's kind of kind of the difference. Um, Man, I guess those those legs did come out kind of washed out like that. I need to fix that and re-output those maps. So let's solo this stuff out. I wish you could put the names right here because that would be so much better. Then I wouldn't have to like guess which is which. I mean, I guess I could just make mental note of it, so. All right. Now, let's, let's get this back in here. Okay, here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Colonel Sanders asks, so why is it washed out in Daz but not in Substance? I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to re-output my maps and see if something didn't get kind of screwy when I was spitting those out. Of course, I also, you know, I can see here that, you know, some of it just, uh, I don't know, I'm not entirely sold on the, on the look of it, to be honest. Like, I, I was, but now I'm not. So let's see what we get. Of course, this thing, I probably need to go over to Daz and turn off IRA because it seems to be crunching my video card really hard. I keep thinking I'm going to be upgrading video cards and all kinds of cool stuff um, soon. And, of course, you know, uh, finances being as they are, um, I haven't done that yet. So I'm really hoping to uh, to take care of that at some point. Really need need a better video card. Nick Silver says Carrera does have GoZ, though. I, I didn't know that Carrera did have it. I'm surprised. That's cool. So, all right. Finish choking through all those material substance. Come on. Come on, sub. Substance. Running through materials. Just chugging and chugging and chugging and chugging. I'm going to turn something off and really make it chug. Let's see. Didn't I want to add some stuff to these, some decals and stuff to these anyway? Mm. I do not understand why it is being such a a beast. Let's turn off all these, well, not all the active post effects. I want to turn off my tone mapping, I think. Now, let's turn off color correction. Let's see, depth of field is turned off. Let's see, let's take that fill layer right there. Let's throw ourselves a nice fat eraser across that. Okay. 
and then let's do some stencil work on that I accidentally um, messed up my interface there I don't like that there we go alright let's bring that up and I also I remember now I noticed over here stencil opacity I'm gonna turn that up and then see alphas symbols it's funny I can think of a lot of symbols I should probably make up and toss in here because it would be real handy to have around <coughs> Really, really handy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hmm. You know what? Let's do that real quick. Because there, there are some things that I want to have in here. So I'm going to pop over to Photoshop for a second. give this just a minute. Yes, I use an antiquated version of Photoshop. I'm so behind on some things. Uh, it's funny. Alright, let's make a 1024, about a 1024. Actually, let's go 2048 so we have a little more to play with. 48. There's just some simple things that I really want to have in my alphas that, that I don't. So let's look I should put a 6 as one logo on this thing. Uh, that would be hilarious to me. Oh, let's grab symbols and append it. Is there anything useful in there that we want? <laughs> Actually, kind of like that. So, toss that out there, and then, and then, no and then. Somebody tell me what that's from. You guys have to know. No and then. Dude. No and then. Dude. No and then. No and then. Dang it. Dang it, Bobby. Substance painter. Okay. Alphas. No and then. Nobody? Nobody's going to jump on that one. It's Dude, Where's My Car? It was like a horrible movie, but it was also funny. Let's see. JPEG. Let's call this one Embossed Star. No, and then, dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want something that looks kind of like a military chevron. So let's uh, let's grab a rectangle tool here. Pull this out. We'll just do that. I'm just using arrow keys here in Photoshop. If you guys, by the way, I like I kind of assume a certain Photoshopiness from everyone. But if you guys ever want just like some serious kind of hardcore Photoshop help, let me know because that can be arranged. Um, Photoshop's kind of been my jam for a long time. Call that Chevron. And then anything else I want to throw in here? <laughs> Might as well play around for just a minute since I'm on here and doing my thing. I'm just going to pop on to get out Google.
And let's do tribal skull. And then let's go to our tools because we're going to be all Mr. Legitty Pants here. We're going to get a. Really? Tools. Really? Where did you go? All results. Anytime. No, I want the image. Duh. <laughs> My bad. Let's see. Now, tools. Usage rights. Labeled for reuse because we're, we're going to be cool here. Alright, and then let's grab something large. Larger than 1024 by 768. Hmm. There we go. Let's just go medium. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with this in a little bit anyway. So <coughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? I kind of like this. Let's take a look at it. I really just there's something about that, and it's labeled as reusable. So I'm gonna copy that image off here. Let's go to Photoshop, paste it, and that did not work. Okay then. Be that way. Copy image. Still won't paste it. Okay. Fine then. <laughs> All right. No, I'm not going to do any of that. Forget you. Forget you. Here. So it was free to use. Let's just use a snipping tool and grab what I need. Ding. Now I can copy that. Because the checkerboards aren't going to matter because I'm going to get rid of those anyway. So not a big deal, people. Not a big deal. There's only parts of this that I want anyway. So let's just do that. Let's just do that. Squeeze, squeeze. Boom. Level command. Level command is your friend, children. Level command is your friend. All right. So now... Let's grab my lasso, and we'll just delete that, and delete that, and we'll delete that. There's that. <laughs> just making myself a little skull. And then I want to get rid of all that right there. Let's turn up the hardness on this, like so. Make this nice and small. Turn that off. on that because I want this to feel kind of stencil-y anyway. <coughs> right. And then maybe uh, let's just make a few more little alterations here and there, shall we? Oop, pardon me. Bumped my mic. There we go. That. Good. That's what I wanted. I just want to kind of break this up a little bit. Change it out a little.
All right, that's good enough. Drawn skull. All right, let's delete that layer. Uh, let's do. Let's look for military symbols. Maybe grab ourselves a few of those. Any size. Let's do... Let's look for line drawing see what it does there. Oh, yeah. That's some cool stuff. Labeled for reuse is good. I was thinking the red mech would be super cool if I did, like, a fire engine version of it. You know, like, put some water tanks on it and stuff, and then some fire department emblems. You could... It's, it's funny, man. I keep looking at this mech, and I'm like, there's so many different things I could do with this that are just... Kind of awesome. Let's look at that. That's pretty cool. I have no idea what that's from, but I dig it. Also dig that, too. So let's just... Uh, of course, these are labeled for reuse. Labeled for reuse, so we are cool. We can use these, and I'm going to. So, so there. I kind of dig that. It's nice and signia. Signy all. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like that it's got a gear in it. Let's see. Anything else we want to grab for now? I'd always come back and grab some more of this stuff later. I just thought it'd be cool to have a few little indicia like this on here right now. So let's copy that image paste that guy into Porto Chop and then there we go squeeze it And just to get rid of that little, clean up the little white edge that's on there, I'm going to throw a black stroke on it. Set that to inside. That's usually enough to take care of that kind of business. So, let's call this military symbol one. Ding! And let's come back over here and close that. That looks like it's got transparency. I bet that doesn't copy. Oh, it did. Yay. Sweet. So. Let's see. Uh, wings coat of arms. I like that. I like that a lot. third SS division logo. Maybe I won't use that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to veer away from things that might be kind of Nazi related because that ain't cool. <laughs> we'll just, I don't know, uh, maybe I'm being a wuss, but I don't care. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to peel back from that. Let's copy this guy and paste him in here. I got no use for some Nazi BS, guys. <laughs> nope. That's a... Uh, that is not cool. In the... in the If I were to make a list of completely uncool things in my world, that's pretty dang high. kind of like this. This is just, I don't know what to call it. Um, I'll just call it, you know, uh, gear, I don't know, crap. I, I really don't know what to call that. Somebody give me something to call that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, gear 
Oh, what are the laurels? Gear laurels. There we go. And that's enough of those for now. Um, I should probably do, let's do some uh, hazard symbols. You could always grab, you know, the emblem of the most evil organization on the planet, but I won't go there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I kind of like that skull and crossbones. And it's labeled for use. Ha -ha. Let's grab an infected. That's a good one. And I'd say... I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you just come up with some goofy stuff you can find in here, too. Mm -mm -mm. Um, where are we going here? Where are we going? Anything? Anything? I'm just kind of skimming through here to see if anything kind of comes to mind that I'd want to grab. Not really, not really seeing anything that looks useful, so let's grab this guy. And we're just gonna call that simple skull. Oh crap, I did not mean to close that. Oops. Whoopsies. <laughs> there we go. Let's just, uh, we'll just use that as a place to start from again. All right. And let's grab this one. And. Hmm. Hmm. Nom, 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 nom. That one I think I'm going to grab like this just so I can kind of get that circle around it because I like the circle I at least wanted to be able to see the circle so that I can like pop one of my own around it so let's go grab an ellipse tool It was a neat little thing too, you start drawing an ellipse or a square or anything like that in Photoshop and then add the space bar to it with your thumb and you can slide it around all over the place. Makes it much easier to get like accurate stuff in there. There we go. I really just wanted that as an easy way to uh, make a selection. So then stroke. There's that. Infectado. Okay. Infected symbol. Alright. Oh, I know something I need to put in here. That'll just be kind of cool to have. So let's... This is kind of funny, but uh, let's just make a little... little scratch mark like that. So that then, like, I could put scratch marks. I'll be able to stamp the scratch marks and then rotate them so it could be, like, tally marks for kills. Yikes. There we go. All right, cool. So that's enough of that silliness. Let's, uh, let's close that back out. Now let's go back over here and I'm going to import those assets. So let's import resources, add resources. Although they actually if I refresh this, they might show up cuz I put them in the default folder. They might show up and they might not. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. 
Probably not. Nope. All right. Import resources. Add resources. Okay. So substance painter. When I toss those resources into into oh where did I go resources? No, maybe shelf. No, no alphas. Oh, I did not put those where I thought I put those. Oh, oh, not cool. Not cool. Let's do some navigating. Program files, algorithmic, substance, painter, two. Substance, painter, two. Okay, there it is. Alphas. Okay. Ah, too many programs. So substance, painter, two. Algorithmic, substance, painter, two. Alphas. Yay. Let's grab all those guys. Bring them in. We're going to put those under alphas slash symbol. And then they should show up in this category right here. So I'll just copy that. Dink, 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 dink. Yes, I make sound effects while I work. And these are all textures. Texture, 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 texture. Nope, they're alphas. Alpha, 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 alpha. I really wish they had a way to do all those at once on that. Alphas and let's just import those into uh, my shelves. Why not? Import. Importato. Okay. So then, alphas, symbols. Okay, Q. Sweet. So now, if I want to put this on here, I can do this. Or can I not? I don't think I can. That's poopy. No. It's no good. Okay, grayscale. Do not want that. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong stinking place. Why is it not going on there? Why? Why is this? Ah, there it goes. There we go. Bingo. Bingo, children. Hide stencil and painting. Let's turn that opacity down. And there's that. Oh, well, there. Let's turn that opacity up. Cool. And I still have some junk on here, so let's grab the eraser and just make sure that's all gone now. Okay, projection. There we go. No! What is it doing? That's not cool. I hit the wrong thing. Sorry, y'all. Alright, let's look at our brush settings here. I'm going to turn that spacing up because I really just wanted to stamp one thing on here. And I also, i got to turn that pen pressure off. Alright. Let's turn that all the way up. There we go. That's super cool. And then I should be able to rotate that a little bit. Yeah, right here. With this. So I can actually angle that so it goes onto that shell straight. Okay. I think I want to uh, pump up that color a little bit. Actually, let's just turn that white on there. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer. And then we will, let's clear that mask on the second one. So now the second one's going to be, go back to yellow. So I can do like some, some designy elements on there with it. OK. 
Okay. Now then, let's put some little indicia on here. Shall we? Indicia. Yay. Let's use the star. And then we can change the size. That's pretty cool. And then let's turn that thing a little bit. There we go. And then, since I'm thinking this guy goes in front of people, we will put his, uh, let's put some kind of a rank symbol on here. I'm really digging that. Really, really digging that. Ah, uh, right there is why those feet came out so shiny on the other one. I got something totally botched there. Let's fix that. Let us fix it, shall we? So, mm, mm, okay. So where did we go? Where did we go now? Okay. Yeah, that steel battered. I'm thinking I need to kill some of the stuff on that. Actually, it looks really cool, it's just the black. Good with that. That's kind of cool. I like seeing those turn red like that. Let's grab a little bit more red in here. I think we need to go in and play around with this stuff a bit because this this painted steel. Oh, that's cool looking black. Man, I like that. I just love being able to turn that stuff on and off and see you know all this cool stuff happen. That just that makes it fun. Makes it really cool. So cool. Let's see, base steel. Oh, and my wife just handed me some Starbucks. I love you, honey. She's awesome. She's awesome. Let's see, metal details. That doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. There comes a point where these things start to get kind of. Uh, complicated, you know, where it's like, oh my god, what all do I have going on here? Ah, no. Undo. Undo. Just accidentally dragged a layer. the texture resolution in the viewport for now for a minute just so this will run a little faster.
Alright. I messed up somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Let's turn this guy off for a minute. Okay. There we go. Wait. Wait for it. Why is my red weathered staying on? I just turned that off. Man, it is, it is just moving like achingly slow right now. It wouldn't surprise me if it crashed any minute now. That would be about my luck. Sit here and get something really super cool going that I'm that I'm just digging on and then have it totally die. <laughs> oh yeah, it's crawling. It is absolutely crawling right now. That's not cool. That is not cool. I'm going to save this, or try to, and hopefully it won't die. Hopefully it won't die. It really seems like uh, this program has decided to just kick my poor little video card in its teeth, which is just not cool. It's not cool at all. I'd appreciate it if it would not do that. Yeah, it's like, I, I can tell from what it just did that it's about six or seven commands behind what I've been telling it to do. So it's it's hanging up really, really hard right now. Which makes sense because this is about a two gig texture setup right now. And it's, yeah, I, I probably have gone a little overboard, but I wanted to kind of be able to show you guys a lot of cool stuff, you know, in one context. Um, so it happens, you know. Can't blame me for being ambitious with that. So when it finishes saving, I'm going to try turning that red texture back on, and then we should be able to output that and see the um, the output show up in DS. Uh, Russ asks, "What graphics card are you running on that system?" Um, it's actually embarrassing to me. Uh, what I'm running on it. And I know I know other folks are running stuff that's slower, but it's still uh, I'm running a GTX 970 with four gig. It's uh, it's puny. It's a puny card for the amount of production that I do. But uh, you know, like I like I said, I, I think I mentioned it earlier. I was like, you know, if I made more money, I would have a better card. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, there's some things on the horizon that should empower me to buy a better card. I desperately need one. I, I really need to be running a uh, uh, like a, a, a 1080 Ti is what I want. Desperately want a 1080 Ti. Those things are so cool. So yeah, if I, if I sat and gave you guys the rundown of my rig specs, you'd laugh because I bet I bet about half of you or more are running machines that would probably outpace mine about six ways from Sunday. Um, the only reason that I'm able to do a lot of the stuff that I do is I just, I'm really, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about optimizations and how to optimize my workflows. So, yeah, it's, it's sad. Like you said, the struggle is real. It is very real. So, let's, okay, now I want to see... I want to see that red. Man, I really like the thing black. That is so mean looking black. Okay. I just don't know why. I better name that. kind of nifty. I'm almost wanting to go with that. Just taking out my rust. Let's let's bring my rust level down and see what that looks like. Or maybe even just change the color on that rust a little bit. Let's kind of bump that. 
let's do that with it. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of getting cool looking there. Okay. And then <laughs> let's see what happens if I turn off these. This guy right here is the one that's really going to bring that back. There we go. That's it. Now we're going. Now we're going where we need to go. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, children. Thank you. Come again. Good stuff. And this, this is one of the things that I love about working out of here is uh, you can do this stuff and then just re-output the textures and it'll just pop right back up. Russ Barrett says, sometimes I feel like I'm using an etch sketch. Dude, I feel like that every day. So aggravating. Like there are, t there are literally times when I do just stop and go draw on in a sketchbook for a while and just go practice traditional art for a little bit because the computers for all we can do with them it's like I, I know exactly what I want it to do and nine times out of ten the computer can't keep up with, with, with what I need out of it and it's just aggravating very very aggravating now that that my friends is a keeper I do believe that is a keeper. Although it might be a bit a bit bright. Yeah, it's just a bit bright. Dang it. We can we can fix that. That's easy enough to fix. Let's just dial that back a little tiny bit. There we go. That's what we that's what we're looking for, folks. Alright. And I do recall that um, I think I have the uh Oh, wait, nope, not that. I want my project configuration. Let's change that from DirectX to OpenGL, which should... Uh, okay, nope. Project configuration. Yeah, I do believe I need to go through and flip the green channels on uh, certain normal maps I have in here. So like that guy right there. Let's go down the project. I'm almost a hundred percent sure of it actually so let's go find that guy I do wish they would give you the ability to just to, to like open a file from here like this um, that would be super danged handy so let's just go over here browse to file location that way I can get to what I need very quickly dev texture dev I want the tiff 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 and I want my cockpit hull and we're gonna open it in Photoshop and then we're gonna invert the green channel because I made a mistake when I output that from ZBrush ZBrush or Z brush as my European friends like to call it. Z brush, to which I always have to say, Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. And hopefully somebody's gonna bite on that reference. Cause because come on, Zed's dead. Let's invert yonder green channel. Yay. And then we're gonna go back over to substance and then back inside substance we're going to click on that and we're going to tell it to reload it reload it and then with that we're also going to change our product config project configuration to DirectX and then we should see all of our lines appear as they are intended Nick Silver says hey I'm English not a chance Pulp Fiction man said dead Pulp Fiction 
Zid's dead, baby. Zid's dead. It's not a motorcycle. It's a chopper. Love that movie. Alright, so now I can output my legs. Legs, 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 legs. Gonna output some legs. <whistles> Mecha 01, texture dev, texture 61, industrial red. And good. Okay, cool. Legs. So then, I'm gonna bring up my export settings. Go over to configuration, temp, and here I'm going to change everywhere that it says engine. I'm going to change that to legs since that's the name I used before. I'll just copy all that and boom, and a boom, and a boom, boom, and boom. So now I'm going to come back over here, ding, and ding. There we go, temp, and I'm going to select. 1003. There we go. There we can see the names it's going to give everything. Everything else is good. And we're going to export that. Alright. Reggie Hicks asks Les, what is the difference between a TIFF and a JPEG file? Um, TIFFs are typically uncompressed. There are formats of TIFF that can have compression and TIFF is the TIFF is a very robust it's tagged image file formats so what that means it's a very robust file format that can have a lot of different options and a lot of variation depending on usages so you know, they can be compressed they can be uncompressed they can use different types of, they can use like LZW or zip compression they can do a lot of different stuff um, TIFFs also can contain alpha channels and they can contain other channels like they can have RGB plus alpha um, like um, EXR files <coughs> uh, you can have TIFFs that are actually EXR files um, you know for like HDRs and HDRIs and stuff uh, JPEGs are just RGB done and they're always compressed even if their quality level is turned all the way to 100 when they're saved they're always compressed so they're always smaller now a jpeg at 100 percent quality is virtually indiscernible from from a tiff of the same data but uh, but it's still going to be smaller because there is some compression going on some folks would argue that jpegs are always lower quality but by the time something is filtered through um, by the time something is stretched across UVs, put on an object, ran through a render engine, through a viewport, all the goofy crap that we're going to do to that poor image, by the time it hits your eyes, you're not really honestly going to be able to tell the difference between a TIFF and a JPEG. So, um, you know, the, the biggest difference I see in them for practical application in this stuff is that JPEGs are smaller, so I use them. So, hopefully that... Uh, answers that question so I'm just waiting on um, on this to to spit out so you are quite welcome Reggie I've uh, dude I've been doing this stuff for longer than I care to think sometimes so um, I, I actually remember JPEGs being introduced like I remember when a buddy said to me dude check this out it's called JPEG. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's been a long time, man. Uh, I can clearly remember downloading JPEGs on a 14 baud modem that had a phone handset dropped onto it. That's been a long time, man. A long time. I've been doing this goofy crap too long. <laughs> oh. So, sometime today though, sometime today we'll have these textures saved out. Sometime today this will happen. It's chugging. It's trying. It's the little engine that could over here. And there it goes. Oh, I see red bars moving. I see progress moving. Progress! Yes! There we go. Okay, cool. You can't stop. You can't stop progress. And there you see it has overwritten 
with our lovely texture maps. Booyah! So now let's pop back over to DS and then refresh yonder textures. Refresh images. Boom! There we go. That's that's sexiness right there. That's that's pure sexiness. And so with that, I'm going to just come back over here and close this whole project now that it's all, all done skis. So let's save it because we really don't want to lose all that. And just because I like to see how hard I can kick my machine right in its gonads, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna turn on iRay over here while <laughs> while Substance is trying to save out a two gig file <laughs> because you know this machine doesn't cry enough. <laughs> you, you guys can't hear it, but it, it is. It's sitting here weeping. No, please, no, no more. Make the bad man stop. Oh, and the stream dies when I switch to IRA. There we go. That's that's much closer to what I was hoping to see. I probably still have some settings a little goofy in here. Let's uh let's tweak on those legs a little bit more now. Oh, Boba Squid. Oh, that's a new name. I don't recall seeing you in here before, but welcome into our little uh, little stream. This is kind of the after hours addendum from earlier. Um, to answer your question, has this model already been rigged? Uh, yes, I have rigged it. But um, oh, Boba says, I'm just learning about all these great videos and my first time catching it live. Dude, welcome. Welcome aboard. Hope to see you here. Uh, more often. Uh, usually these are going on earlier than this. I do these from 5 to 7 p.m. on Saturday. Um, although, uh, you know what, if, um, I don't know, you guys are always welcome to talk about times and all that kind of stuff and, and toss out ideas for times and uh, and we can always run those by the uh, the folks in management and see what they say because uh, um, I am not opposed to doing these stuff, th these things at other times. Um, I'm actually not real fond of doing them on Saturdays, honestly. But it was asked, so we're doing them. Um, but uh, uh, Bubba says, I'm just learning about all these great videos. My first time catching it live. And I hope you dig them. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, honestly, if I go back over the last nearly a year that we've been doing these, um, and you put it all together... There's legitimately enough information contained in everything that I've taught in this time that a person should be able to go from like almost no knowledge of this stuff to being able to conceivably start making uh, content, definitely making content of their own to use, and maybe, you know, really kind of sort of making content to sell and, and try to get on their, you know, get their own little revenue streams going with it. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's been the goal all along was to basically empower people to be able to, uh, you know, to, to make products and, and kind of, uh, you know, get involved in, in this whole, this whole business, this thing, I don't know, whatever it is. So, um, Anyway, yeah, I hope you dig it. Um, let's go in here and tweak on these materials just a little bit. You know, the the conversion 
It's it's very close coming from Substance to to to, uh, to Iray and Das Studio, but you know, I, as with anything, it's when you step from one program to another, it's gonna be a little different. There, there's you know, so it's not always a hundred percent exact. So, oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, Boba says I love the videos, ton of great information. It's been really helpful for me. Well, I'm glad. That's that's cool. And uh, and and don't forget too, you know, you can reach out to me on social media through you know Facebook. Um, I'm not as active on Twitter as as I probably ought to be, but uh, definitely Facebook, um, a little bit on Instagram. You can also, um, if you're if you're not already there, check out the uh, the CG Bytes um, content artist group on uh, Facebook. We've got a dedicated group there that you can post questions to anytime. And and if I don't get to it, some of the folks who watch these things might have an answer for you as well. So that's been one of the cool things about doing these is the the people who've become regulars hanging out uh, with this stuff have started kind of helping each other out. And it's been neat for me because I've gotten to watch people start to put out products of their own. And, yeah, that's just cool. It's been really cool. So um, let's, uh, let's tweak on these materials a little bit more. So I'm really, really kind of happy with where we're at. Um, Let's turn that diffuse roughness down a little bit. I don't mind if the legs materials aren't quite the same as the, the hull. We could play around with it. I think we're good to go. I think we are good to go with that. So let's make a. Um, <laughs> let me make a dedicated folder for this. This is the ATW, and let's just toss a copy of him in there. I said toss a copy of him in there. There we go. And then I want to add a folder in here called Materials. Loot. Do, do, do. All right. And so now this guy right here is going to it's going to be Industrial Red. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to rename that and call it Military Red. I'll have to tweak some stuff out a little bit, but it, it became more aggressive than just Industrial. Um, so, attack red. There we go. And I want all of those, and we're going to save them. Good night, Russell. Later, man. So, there's that. And let's just pop this viewport back out here. Really don't want those kind of current era cars in the shot. And then let's go back to our scene and let's unhide the other one. Give that a second. It's going to load a whole other texture set in. And uh, Boba, if you're just, you know, since you're just joining us, I don't know if you saw the yellow version of this or not, but uh, I've got the yellow and the red both out here in the same shot. In all their all-terrain walk and glory. I thought a nice, you know, the, the airport landing strip was actually a really cool HDR to use. You know, to shoot these guys against.
One of the things that would be kind of neat to do with these two is actually a, a set of geo shells that, uh, like, you could do indicia for these and markings and stuff with geo shells. So then we could just have like color palettes. You know, you could have like color schemes on them. They could have geo shells for damage, geo shells for um, for different markings and stuff like that. There's so much stuff we could do with these. It's just craziness, you know. So, anyway, um, well, there you go. That's the uh, completed textures on this. We ended up with two pretty nifty texture sets. Um, and uh, you guys got to watch the whole thing happen. Hopefully, um, hopefully you all were able to pick up on some stuff along the way. You know, it was, uh, I, I know I kind of cover a lot in the course of these, but uh, there's a lot to cover. So... Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, well, that is going to bring this little addendum to a close, I think. Um, I'll let this sit here and cook for a minute so you guys can get kind of a clearer image on this before I fully sign off. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, next week, you will get to see, um, get to peer into the whole process of rigging something like this, which is actually nowhere near, I shouldn't say it's nowhere near as difficult as it seems. It doesn't have to be as difficult as it seems. There are ways that you can plan your work on something like this. And if you plan your work well, then, then it goes very easily. Um, most of the time, the issue comes in that um, when working on anything, anything at all you may like there's no amount of planning you can do that actually gets everything accounted for in advance so at some point there's going to be a curveball but you still try to plan as far as you can um of course, i mean experience plays into that if you if you you know if you made a bazillion of these things like i have then you kind of you kind of know where the pret falls are going to happen so um but you want to try to plan and be prepared, you know, for different things, and think about your workflow and work all through it. You know, that's that's kind of why I've done this series, the mechanical series, um, because it it I wanted to show a lot of techniques, obviously, because people want the techniques, but I also wanted to show that workflow. Uh, workflow is king, 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 king. Workflow is so important. Um, without good workflow, I mean, you could you could do. You could have great ideas and crap workflow, and your ideas are never going to see the light of day. So, I think I'm going to tweak this hatch glass a little bit while I'm sitting here thinking about this, just because. Um, but yeah, you're uh, you know you you could have great ideas, but if the workflow is bad, they're they're never going to happen. They're just not. And um, you know it sucks, but it's it's very true. Oh yeah, here we can. Can you hear it? Can you, can you hear the tears falling from my video card as I do this? <laughs> that poor, poor video card. It's so pained right now. It's like, no, man, stop it. Too much. Oh, uh, let's see. down yeah I'm trying to trying to get them get the uh, the glass in here to be a little more reflective that might be a little too much reflective Of course, the other thing, too, is using a top coat weight on there. You can actually pull some interesting things out of glass by adding some top coat to it. Crank up its reflectivity. So if I move my camera down here, it should start to pick up some reflections out of that HDR.
and you can always uh, get some just manual forced transparency even if you're using the uh, um, refraction like I'm using to try and get you know PBR glass you can still do some stuff with cutout opacity too and it should have yeah there we go should have some effect there so uh, Colonel Sanders asks Les what do you think of Genesis 8 well sir let me say, currently I'm trying not to think about Genesis 8 any more than I have to, to be honest. Um, it's it's solid. It is solid. I, I'm, I'm actually not, uh, I'm not hating on it like a lot of people are. Um, unfortunately, like I, I have a whole production docket, a whole production schedule of stuff on deck that kind of precludes me jumping into Genesis 8 super deep just yet. Um one of the things I like about Genesis 8 actually is the level of compatibility it has with G3 it means a lot of things that I want to do with G3 will work with G8 right off the bat, like with very little fuss. So that's cool. That's very cool to me because that means a lot of the work that I was already planning on being doing right now, I can just keep doing. And so I don't really have to stress on the G8 thing a whole lot. Um, you know, I, I had the option of, of being an early adopter with G8. Uh, I've actually, you know, full disclosure, I think I've had a copy of G8 sitting here for a few months. Um, and and I've looked at it a few times, but, you know, there, there was a number of things about it that I just knew. I was like, okay, well, stuff I was already planning, stuff I'm already working on, I don't really have to shift gears yet. So um, I was actually really thankful for that. So that's a cool thing. I think in the long run, though, there are some important changes they made to G8 that I'm super stoked that they have embraced. Like getting away from T-poses. I despise T-poses. I, I, I have despised them for a long time. Um, you know, the, the, there was a period of time, I mean, like back when I first started, and, and most people when they start, uh, when, when you start as a TD, technical director, a rigger, um, it's just natural to start out thinking about things in T-pose, but when you spend enough time studying anatomy and looking at it, T-poses are really kind of counterintuitive to having good anatomical movement. Um, you know, the way the, the, the way the clavicle and all that stuff moves, the way the deltoids move, um, an A-pose is actually better for having a, a more correct... Um, anatomical volume in those areas by default so that's a big big deal there's like my human figure scarlet my most recent human figure that was released scarlet uh, was an a post figure and I think that's why a lot of people didn't develop for her um, so you know that that happened we went there but as can go there you know the, the power of the marketing is such that it's that so if they say we're doing a pose everybody's like oh okay it's time to do a pose and, and whatever, you know, that's fine. That's great. Do the A-pose. I'm glad because now we get this improved volume. There's a number of things that that adds that are, that are pretty cool. Um, they also have done it with the legs slightly parted. Again, I'm like, thank you. It is high time we got that because, again, I prefer having those legs parted a little bit. That's going to make a lot of problems people have had for ever with rigging things through the groin area um, become much easier to deal with. So those are some good things. Those are actually my two biggest points about it. I don't mind that the eyelashes are separate. There's some technical reasons that they did that and I fully understand them. Uh, reasons that have to do with the way that they um, uh, try to have morphs and things propagate out into um, um, into other other figures of the clothing stuff like that so th there are some good reasons for that um yeah generally speaking i think g8 is a good thing i think it's a very good thing um i just don't um yeah there th there are some there are some things that uh, i think could be improved some number of things about its rollout that i think could have been improved but but in general if i had to give them if I had to give them a, a letter grade, I would give them a strong A minus. Strong A minus. There's just a couple of things, you know, uh, on, on a scale of, of zero to a hundred, I would call this about a 
about a 93 94 percent it was really good so um you know, Colonel Sanders says, yeah, eyelashes, I think was a good idea. Should have also made eyebrows separate. I, You know, I don't mind. Well, I, I, here's the thing, man. It's like, it, this would be a great product. You could make your own eyebrows. And they're going to follow whatever is on there because of the way the facial rigging works. Um, they did some cool stuff with the facial rig, too. Uh, and I like what they've done with adding the facial rigging into uh and into power pose the way they did because like if you look at a high-end um character rig that we'll use in maya on a you know a game or a film project um i like like those kind of that kind of animation system that power pose is um you know that's been one of the things i've done in my job for years is actually building those kind of things in maya custom per character so what they did with that with g8 is really super cool um, they, there's there's some really good stuff under the hood there, so um, well you guys um, there you can see I mean it's still a little grainy but it's cooking down pretty nicely you can see our our, our two uh, two different loadouts for textures on this mech um, I I love that I'm really happy that that we did that it's it wasn't planned uh, I really was just gonna go through and show you guys stuff about the yellow textures but then I got into it and for the sake of demonstration we ended up turning out this whole other red texture set and um, you know now I'm just I'm looking at this thing I'm like man I want to do nose art for it I want to do you know I want to have some cool like World War II goes sci-fi chick images you know like 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 cool chicks laying back across the thing and you know do some gun loadouts for this thing there's all kinds of goofy crap that i want to do for this stupid mech now i'm like totally going into full-on old school you know tabletop mech warrior mode with this thing it's kind of hilarious but uh so anyway yeah I, i've enjoyed myself i hope you guys have dug it and uh so i'm gonna hop off here though because it is uh it's actually pushing 10 o'clock here man that means i've done like four hours of this stuff on uh live today did not mean to do that, but there it is. And uh, so I am going to be hopping off, but I dig uh, dig that you guys were here and uh, hanging out again, just watching some stuff. And uh, so hopefully you pick up some cool tips and tricks out of uh, out of what I'm showing. And you'll be back with us next week when we talk about rigging on this thing, and you see it really come to life the rest of the way. So uh, next week is rigging, and then the following week we're going to be doing promotional renders doing some artwork with it, um, doing some poses. I'm still going to use G3 for poses, although I might pose some G8 stuff with it. I don't know. i got to talk to the boss man see what he says about that. Um, but uh, we're going to be posing some characters with it and just all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, we got two more weeks of Mechaniacal, and then we're going to move on to some, some new things, get some new stuff on deck. So um, anyway, uh, hope you all dig it, and uh, I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.